was the 70s. I had spent three very confusing years training as a ballet dancer at the uh, ballet school. First under Dulcie House and then uh, David Poole. <clears throat> Disillusioned, I ran away and I met up with uh, an old friend from ballet school, Diane Sparks. And I went to teach for her and Sheila Opperman for a short while in Vintuk, at the Vintuk Dancing, at the Vintuk Dance Academy. Because I was no longer studying, the army called me up for a three month camp, which then put pay to my job at the Vintuk Dance Academy. After the military training on the border, it's border duty, I got danger pay. Um, I was back in the Macroland unemployed. So I started teaching in the region and we uh, created the Namakwalanse Dance Gesellschap. Knew nothing about funding for the arts, it was a thought that never even entered my mind. I had no idea that the concept even existed. And uh, we did a lot of performances in the area and had a massive audience. I wanted to create a, a ballet. That was the vocabulary that I used because that was the training that I had. I had no idea who Lavelle was um, anyway. So we created the very first version of Bolero here in 1976. Um, when I look back on it, the choreography was, to say the least, unimaginative. Unimaginative. It was uh, stilted. It was very carried up the arse-ish, but it was the start of a very, very long journey that uh, culminated in a training process that exists today that is unique and that produces technically very strong dancers. So now it's 1989, uh, more than 10 years later. At this stage, John, myself and Dawn, had taken over the Jazz Art Dance Studio near the Burkhardt in Cape Town. We now had a loosely knit dance company that was not professional was a group of people, all who had other jobs, most of them were school teachers. By this stage we'd met Jay Pather, and who had a major impact on who we were and what we did and why we made dance. Uh, it was the year of the Purple Rain, the people shall govern, when All the protesters were sprayed purple in the city centre and we were now boy boycotting. In fact, we were boy boycotting ourselves into a coma. We would not perform in any state-funded theatre. We were boycotting the Grahamstown Festival. As an alternate festival, we attended a festival in Durban at the University of Durban West uh, I had, by this stage, through a production called Ava Manyani, I had closer contact with African dance. And also because of Dawn Langdow, this next version of Bolero, for the first time, included gum boots. Uh, our development was still 
in an infant in in its infancy but the choreography was less stilted than the first version but it was still very limited uh, it was still very uh, it was still had a lot of artifice because the predominant training of all the dancers was that of the Western classical ballet and the Western contemporary dance. In 1990, we perform a very, very angry version of Bolero at the Dance Umbrella in Johannesburg. It wins an award. We make a very rude acceptance speech, but still accept the money. Loud boos from the other dancers in the audience. It's during this time that Albie Sachs visits our studios in Jamison Street near the Boer County. He yells at me and he says, If Madiba can talk to the crap, who the hell are you not to negotiate with David Poole? Cut a long story short, jazz art now becomes the first predominantly black contemporary dance with funding and attached to what was then KPAN. For the first time now, we're all on salaries. It's now 1992. Uh, the CLAC holds a referendum for white South Africa. A pathologist speaks to me and he informs me that political violence at the time was getting a lot of publicity, that black South African women were being killed in huge numbers, largely by people that they knew. And Jay creates unclenching the fist. Jay decides that we should do a double bow and that we should perform Bolero alongside Unclenching the Fist. And for the first time, Jay introduces Bharatanatyam. The work now opens with a homage to Lord Shiva, the god of creation and destruction, the day of our first democratic elections. For the first time, everybody was allowed to vote. We rushed back to the studio in Jamison Street and took a group photograph. That was the same year that Veronica Paper, director of the Cape, Abs Cape, Cape Town City Ballet, um, proposed a collaboration between the two dance companies. A brave move. So, and she specifically requested that we perform Bolero. Great excitement. They were going to dance to a live orchestra for the first time. The majority of the people in the audience at the Opera House were supporters of the ballet company. And they were used to streamlined dancers and the women having all their hair scraped back into a bun. A shocked, blue-rinsed, bejeweled lady said in the foyer, Oh, I need to go home and take a tranquilizer. In 2001, Sefiso uh, Kuyama and Spona uh, Kalisundaba, who were products of a project that Walter Geldenes had done in Durban years earlier. It was a project for unemployed youth. I had started training them on that project and they eventually landed up at Jazz Art. In 2001, by this stage, they were fully fledged artists, both performing, teaching and choreographically. 
And they decided, along with Ondine Bella, to return to Durban to restart this project, Penduka Dance Theatre. So we had a farewell season for them. <laughs> so we performed an all-female version of Bolero, a feisty bunch of women, a feisty bunch of women. Sponogalisa Daba, Ondine Bello, Ananda Fuchs, Jackie Mania Pilo, Megan Erasmus, uh, Elisma Wiltskit, and Natalie Roberts. So, it's 2003. The Jazz Art Fundraising team is on a roll. We are very good at fundraising. Our training program is doing exceptionally well, with somewhere between 250 and 500 young hopefuls auditioning for the program. We mount two spectacular versions of Bolero, one at Speed and one at the Artscape Theatre Centre with over 40 young dancers. Kids from the Jazz Art Training Program who come from all over the country. Wendy Abrams' youngsters from PAFTA. Philip Boyd's Dance for All. Abida Medell's Eon Group and Dawn Langdown's Lum Jive. And the stage is full of youth. Sexy strong fuck <laughs> that tomorrow we were all hoping for in 2006 <coughs> the dancers in the company chief amongst them the Bern Buddha were whinging we also want to do bolero so I thought I'd set them an impossible task and said, if you can get some of the old guard to make a guest performance, to a guest appearance, uh, then we can go ahead and do it. To my horror, Laverne got no less than 16 of them to agree. I almost had a heart attack. John Linden, Dawn Langdown, Sufiso Kuyama, Vuza Bantul Gema, Greg Adams, Sponogalis Ondaba, Penny Stein, Ananda Fuchs on Dean Bello, Karen Shaw, Heinrich Reisenhofer, Jay Pather, Busisiwe and Gebulana, Mpoteng Shuping, Balu Neverson, and Debbie Goodwin. After these golden oldies, completed the entrance, which was the gumboot sequence. All John did was waft across the stage to thunderous applause. He brought the house down. In 2008, Georgina Thompson staged a dance umbrella retrospective and, and, and requested Bolero. This was the first occasion that we danced the gumboot choreography without boots because I'd had enough of it by the stage. That was really by a old man, so I knew who love and how. 2016 is Bolero's 40th birthday. So we agree to do a double bow on Nicolette Moses' festi dance festival at the Baxter. And we pair it up with John's pros and cons of hitchhiking to Roger Waters' music. I don't think I've ever sat in an audience and watched Bolero, no matter how bad the performance, without the standing ovation at the end. <laughs> so far, it's the one work that we've created that always ends with a standing ovation. And I'm convinced it's Ravel's music. It's got bugger all to do with choreography. Bolero has come full circle. And here we are. 
more than four decades later, again we must distance. We must stay away from the other. We can only hope that this will lead to a badly needed healing process for us all.